Saturday. Woof woof. Yay. Another two Leiden shores to service. Yay. <laughs> oh God, I do get me selling these scrapes, don't I? Where I save up a lot of shovels to do. <sighs> right, South Cumbria. Um, 420 CVT and a 420 normal. Van's all loaded up. I didn't get into the yard last night to empty the van from yesterday's shovel fiasco. Um, came by the yard at about 10 past five, quarter past five, and the last lad out of the yard was just locking the front gate. I thought, oh, can't be bothered. I can't be bothered to unlock all the gates and I would have had no, I wouldn't have been able to get into the workshop. I've got keys for the yard so I can get to my parts container, but I haven't got keys for the workshop. So I would have had a lot of empty, well, I've had a, I would have had a lot of waste oil drums full of oil to just dump out and sort out another day. <coughs> so I just tooled on past the road end and went on, which means I've spent the last 40 minutes emptying and restocking the van for today. Anyway. Um, yeah. Go and spend the day in Cumbria. Go and get some shovels done. Hopefully by the time I've had my second coffee, there's a bit more of a spring in my step. <laughs> Slept well last night as well. Could have done with sleeping longer this morning, to be fair. Never mind. Good job I can get out of bed of the morning. Hellfire. Been waiting here 10 minutes now. Second coffee has been had, I'm a bit brighter than I was. <laughs> right, let's go. It's not raining at the minute either. Right then, I think what I'm gonna do is put both machines side by side. They're both a service. This one's getting a bigger service. It's 3,000 hours, so we've got axles, hydraulics. The only thing that's not getting changed is the transmission. Oh, look, watch this. That, press and hold the unlock button. Wanna do it? Hey. Door comes off its latch. The only thing that would make that way better is if the door swung around like that. If you park it on a hill, it'll do it. <laughs> hey, right, okay. This is the 420 CVT. Boss van there, he's gonna nip away for an hour. But come back with some bacon sandwiches. There we go. I'll be quite happy once I get going, I suppose. Okay, I'll leave this one to warm up. I'll go and fetch the other one Pack it next door. The OG, the original shovel. It was this machine that came to this quarry as a demonstrator. Since this machine has been on this quarry, they've got a 30 ton excavator, they've got a 22 ton excavator, and they also got that CVT there. This is the one that opened the door for Doosan. <laughs> right. This one's just a 500 hour service. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, I think that's the best job. Like, put them both side by side and then uh, park the van side onto the back of them and that way you can get it both of them just the same air con out of filter, engine oil, engine oil, fuel filter yeah just a 500 hour service five and a half thousand hours there's no point uh, leaving this one running because I'll be two or three hours with that one. So when I've nearly finished that, when I'm putting the back axle oil in, 
start and run this one warm it through. I haven't looked at the weather forecast today. Not right sure whether to put a normal boiler suit on or my waterproof one. I put my waterproof one on yesterday, didn't I? And after lunch, I switched to this one. That one's soaked in diff oil. Needs a wash, really. It needs a soap, really. Um, I'll put a I'll put a normal boiler suit on. I think. Interesting content. Oh, welcome to my welcome to my mind. <laughs> what boiler suit am I going to wear today? Ooh. Maybe the title of a video. I don't know what boiler suit to wear. Ooh. Sand everywhere. Look. Look at it. It just gets everywhere. Flipping sand. Guarantee all my tools today will have that gritty feel when I'm using them. Yeah. Anyway. Let's go. Start the engine oil. We'll have about 36, 38 litres in here to take out. Five cylinder Scania engine, DC9. DC09? DC9. Um, talking about yesterday. Just briefly, um, I put my trials and tribulations of me EGR valve actuator on the old Instagram. Um, and a couple of guys commented that the, although the EGR actuator looks the same as the exhaust brake actuator, apparently, well, obviously, really, there'll be a, a difference in the programming of it because it'll probably have a Bigger, bigger or lesser sweep angle. Um, however, it still remains, doesn't it, that there's an error on the can, so there's an error inside the, the actuator that won't communicate via can, regardless of whether it's an exhaust brake actuator or an EGR actuator. But it is entirely possible that the... It, it is entirely possible that an exhaust brake actuator was put into an EGR actuator box because they look identical, don't they? That's what I'm wondering. I'm sure there's. I'm sure lots of you have. Oh, sugar, it's filling up quick. Stop, 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 uh, anyway, it's not as bad as the transmission oil leak that I created um, earlier in the week. I just totally forgot about that. Anyway, talking about that EGR actuator. Um, one of my colleagues is going to get that machine on the way to another job, I think, um, while I'm on holiday. So, when I get back from my holidays... I'll uh, find out who went to it and just double check that everything went well because I couldn't see it being anything else. Um, I couldn't. You'll notice on this machine there's no EGI. Oh, I nearly fell over. It's because everything's treated in here. The purpose of EGI, for anybody wanting to know, is to reduce NOx. So, the previous generation of machines, they use EGR, so they put exhaust gas back into the inlet side, and that gets rid of more NOx. And therefore, the SCR doesn't have as much NOx to treat. So therefore, you don't use as much AdBlue. Whereas this is a, what's this, a stage five, isn't it? This is DPF and SCR. So you'll use more of blue to bring the knocks down, but it also catches all the soot and burns it off into teeny tiny little particles, which is easier for us to breathe. <laughs> easier for us to breathe in. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny old world, isn't it? Anyway, right. Told you everything was all gonna be all gritty. It's horrible. I hate it. <laughs> it all stems from my childhood. 
sand and grittiness. I remember when I was a young lad down in Cornwall on holiday, um, the cool thing to do was bodyboarding. It wasn't a surfer. Um, and I remember we hired these wetsuits to do bodyboarding. And I took it off for my lunch. And as you take a wetsuit off, it kind of peels inside out, doesn't it? And I chucked it on the sand. And then I remember putting this damp wetsuit on that was covered internally with sand. And I think it's from that moment on, I've never been a sand person. Everything that I've touched has just got that gritty feel after yesterday. Everything in the van's just coated in a gritty dust. Bah. <laughs> right, I'm on with fuel filters now. Um, not more to add to that really, is there? There's a fuel filter, I'm going to change it. And there's one there, I'm going to change that too. Sun is, abs it's an absolute treat that sun, not a breath of wind. Compared to yesterday, I'm in a much better fettle. Okay, you're gonna sit, you're gonna get sick of hearing about this now. Exhaust brake actuator, the story develops. Um, so yesterday when I decided that the new actuator was also at fault, I took a picture of the part number on the box and sent it to HQ stores. And I said, while I'm on holiday, one of the lads from HQ is gonna come down and put this actuator on this shovel. Could you please order one up at your end for delivery at your end? And uh, just talking about it earlier, it dawned on me. What if my man's ordered the exhaust brake actuator and not the EGR actuator? So I just messaged the starsman up at HQ and I said, that part number that you ordered yesterday, can you double check that it's an EGR actuator and not an exhaust brake actuator? Just message me back now saying, that's an exhaust brake actuator that I've ordered. Do you want the EGR actuator? I said, yes. So that explains why that actuator did not fix that shovel yesterday. Wrong actuator. We're just uh, priming this fuel up. See all the air coming out. Those of you that don't know, once those bubbles stop, that means that the fuel has gone into here, filled this filter up, gone round and through and down and up and into here and filled it up to here. And that means all of this is full of fuel. And the only bit that needs bleeding is from that pipe down to there. But I find that by the time you've got fuel up to there, lock that off, pump this half a dozen times, it'll kindle straight up. Just thinking though, it still begs a question, doesn't it? Why was I still getting a can error when the correct actuator was plugged into the exhaust brake? Still getting the same can message. <laughs> Maybe it was a dodgy one. Yeah. Engine oil's going in, I've just done the return filters and me, um, I suppose you'd call it brunch has arrived. Oh, and a cup of coffee. A treat. Oh, there's a bit of sausage in there and all. Oh. Tell you what, these lot know how to persuade me into a Saturday service, don't they? The least they could do. <laughs> oh wait, that pump's run out of oil, hang on. Go and set that into a new drum. Stopped me bacon roll, that was a treat. Even filled up my coffee. Oh. Okay, we're over the hurdle. Um, engine oil's back in. Engine service is done. I'm gonna um, change this pilot filter in a moment. Cab filters to do, add blue filter, and then axles. So, I'd say we're over halfway, but there's still an hour in doing the axles, isn't there? Mmm. Hellfire. Coffee's good. No, oh, sorry, we've only got the cheap coffee left, but I'll be honest with you, it's not too bad, that. Um, yeah, it's made blue filler. Right, a pair of gloves, where did I put them? Did I keep them? I don't think there was a, well, there was a hole in them. I'll get a fresh set. Man, our blue filter's done. 
Don't forget this little chap here. And here. This is the um, exhaust uh, air. Yeah. Add blue tank breather filter. Not only ain't too bad, but that's because change it regularly. Get this out of here. You probably can get your little screwdriver in there and take the Jubilee cup off, but just a little M8 bolt in here that holds it on a P clip and I can get it right out to here and not mess about, so. Yeah, after this, I'll do the axles, I think. All right, cab filters are done. Well, exterior cab filter is. Still need to do the interior one. I'm gonna start with the back axle. Save the best till last. Get me hub tray. That is beautiful now. Um, I was thinking today would have been a great day to get the shed finished. <laughs> Been, uh, been on me building a shed at home last weekend. It's the weekend before last. I dug a load of, I dug a big hole. Last weekend I filled that big hole with two ton of hardcore and then put a load of sharp sand down and put some engineering slabs down. This weekend is uh, putting the shed up. If I get home at a decent time today, I'm gonna make a start on it. I wanted it finished before I go on holiday, but this is my last weekend before I go away. Um, I've still got all sides to clad, if you know what I mean. I've built a frame and set it to one side, so it's a case to put the frame up and then clad it, but I'm gonna have to clad it when I get back off my holidays. What am I in here for? This, anti-squawk fluid. What, what? That. Ooh, watch the paintwork. And I need 90 degree pitch because that's handy to get into the doodle. There it is, all gritty and grimy. Oh, fire, it's one o'clock. Do you ever come across them drums where you can't physically open them even though you've got the plastic tag off? But two here. I bet this will make it look. Hardly put any effort into that, but I just could not grab hold of them at all. Twist them. There we go. Right, go and get me pump. I've got our oil out. Got my sample. Sit that up on there. Um, yeah, we're winning at the minute, like. It'll be just over an hour doing that. I reckon I have two finishing time today. Now we're back up the road, half three. Best part of the day is gone, isn't it? Never mind. <laughs> At least it's been a successful day so far. Okay, seven minutes past one, that's finished. I'm just gonna button it all up in a minute or two, but first I'll just kin all this one up to warm the engine all through. The nice thing about doing two machines the exact same if there is a nice thing about doing two at the same time is that all the tools that I've got out and use on that one I'll no doubt be using on that one so don't need to have a square up just yet uh, yeah we're all done just the interior cab filter to do so when I climb up and start it up, we'll have that changed out. Right, that's the fuel filters done, engine oil's done. I've just got the pilot filter to do. In a minute or two, what I'll do is a quick guide on how to set your load and shovel up. I know a lot of you viewers don't need to know this information. However, I get quite a lot of uh, questions, mainly on Instagram. Um, operators that have either not been on one of these before or they've just got a new one delivered and they're just asking a few questions how to set things up so at the end of this video I'll do a little how-to guide of where to find things in the user menu and how to set the shovel up. I think that might be beneficial for people and then when people ask me 
how do you do this and how do you do that? Um, I can just tell them to go and watch this video, can't I? Okay, here's some things that you might not know if you've operated one of these DL420 loading shovels. Or if you're new as an operator, some of the things that you might need to know when you're operating one of these. First thing is key fob, right? So when I came here, the uh, quarry manager gave me two key fobs, one for the 420 CVT, one for the 420. I didn't know which key fob did which. So to find out which key fob is assigned to which shovel, if you've got a few in the key box, press the and it pips the machine. So I know that this key fob will work this shovel. Next, we've got central locking, as you can see. If I press and hold the unlock button, it takes the door off the latch for me. From the ground here, I can swing that back and now I can climb up into the cab without uh, scrambling with the door halfway up the steps. Another way you can do that, if you open this little cover here, we press the door switch open, does the same job. So we can open the door from the ground. I agree, if, uh, if the door opened fully, that would also be nice. Climb up into this cab and we'll get you familiar with the screen and the buttons. So now we're in the cab, we press this stop start button here once, the light illuminates green. That puts it into ACC mode, accessory mode. So your charges will start charging, but the ignition isn't on basically. And once we press the button again, turns red, everything beeps at you to tell you that it's woken up. That's gonna beep in a minute, that's the load master. Once all the screens have warmed up and beeped at you, we can press and hold this button. The engine starts. Right, we've got a keypad down here. What in creation do all these buttons do? Well, we can read the operator's manual, but nobody likes to do that these days. So what they've done is they've put an information button here. So if we press this information button, all the buttons start flashing at you. And say you didn't know what this button does, you can press it. On the screen, it tells you what it's used for, and if the light is on, it turns on the load isolation. If the light is off, it turns off the load isolation. Load isolation, it absorbs the bumps as you're driving, so it enables the boom cushioning. So I'll get you familiar with these buttons. We've got the engine mode. At the moment, it's in eco, then it can go into standard, then it can go into P for power. This is the gear selection, so the light on the oven in this corner here is manual, which means you change gears with this. Nobody likes to do that. This mode here, it will automatically shift. It's in auto and it'll change gears between one and four. And finally over here, if you're doing a lot of load and carrying, it'll change between gears two to four. This button here, when it's enabled, it is your inching brake, so when you depress the brake pedal so far it cuts drive to the transmission. This one here is your torque converter lockup. Again, if you're doing a lot of load and carrying, if you have that selected, then the machine basically, once you hit fourth gear, it locks up the torque converter and it essentially gives you a fifth gear, which allows you to go flying up and down the quarry. This one here is your auto diff lock. So when that is on and it feels the wheels are starting to spin, it'll engage the diff lock automatically. If that is off and you've got a button down here next to your brake pedal, press that and your diff lock will come on. This one here is your um, bucket leveling. So with that light on, once you've tipped the bucket out, you pull the joystick all the way over to the right, it automatically re-levels your bucket. If you want to reset that into a different position, all you need to do is set your position that you're working at, press and hold it until the beeper in the cab goes off and that's that position saved. And it's the same again for this one. 
if you are regularly loading hoppers you would have that set to lift to your hopper height all by itself in this case though it is at the weighing point of when the bucket needs to weigh this one here is your emergency steering button so if for whatever reason you lose steering you've got an emergency override you can press and hold that and steer your steering wheel we talked about that one load isolation warm up your mirrors scoosh your window wiper beacon rear lights front lights and your homologized lights onto the screen press the home button we have got our five icons, maintenance speaks for itself, expendables management, you can see when the filters are due for a change. We can tick or untick the box that reminds you when it's due a service. Monitoring, we can see various bits and pieces of what the engine's doing. Confirmation of warning sign, if we get any sort of a warning sign, engine management light, if we go into here, we can. it'll tell us the error code and uh, gives us a better idea of what's wrong with the machine. Back out of here, fuel efficiency and performance. So we can see how we've been driving it weekly and daily, and also your operation data, your utilization, etc., etc. You can also go into the auto shutdown setting at the moment it's enabled. So if I don't touch this machine for three minutes, then it will switch itself off can change that time up to a maximum of an hour and the minimum of three minutes we can also enable and disable auto idle so at the moment we're ticking over at 750 rpm if i touch the steering for example it brings the engine rpm up to 950. machine configuration in here we can set the speed in which the boom suspension is activated said before in previous videos you don't want to be digging off your accumulators so I suggest that you set that to a high, higher speed than 2 or 3k say 6 is probably adequate you can set the reverse fan so at the moment it's set to auto and it's going to do a reverse cycle every 120 minutes in dustier environments you might want to change that you can set it to as little as 15 minutes if you're in recycling or something like that where it's very dusty and there's a lot of particles about you definitely want to set that a bit lower you can also change that to manual so if i hit the manual button here and click back it then gives us the option to start the reverse fan cycle and if we hit that and rev the machine fan speed builds up in reverse and it will blow all the dust out of the coolers Finally, gauge panel configuration. We can set all the screen data, everything set where we want it to be. Operator management, we can set passwords, things like that. When it comes to moving the shovel backwards and forwards, we have got three options. We have got the standard forward reverse shuttle on the steering column. We've got a forward reverse on the back of the joystick and we've also got forward and reverse on the electric steering. So to enable the forward and reverse on the joystick, for example, we need to put our foot on the brake, take the park brake off. And while pressing the foot brake, we press this top yellow button. That then enables a blue light on the screen and we can use forward and reverse on here. So we can use forward and reverse on this joystick and still use the electric steering by pressing the red button and the gray button together. That then adds the blue steering wheel button and we can steer on here. However, because we've already selected the joystick, it doesn't let us use forward and reverse on here. So if we just want to use the forward and reverse and the steering on the one armrest, Park brake back on, park brake off, foot brake down, press and hold the grey and the red button together. And we get the forward and reverse and we should have forward and reverse here. Dead easy. And in which case we can fold this all the way up out the way. 
So that pretty much sums up how to operate this shovel. I hope you found it interesting. If you haven't, I'm sorry. Just try to do something different than filming myself servicing shovels. <laughs> right, thanks for watching anyway. I'm gonna go home now, it's Saturday. Um, and it's uh, half past two, so I'll be home for half past three. See you in the next one.